Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use JUnit 4 to do tests inside of IntelliJ. So, from the beginning, I've got a IntelliJ's launched here. This is uh, the 2016 edition. I'm going to create a new project to start with, and from here, I'm just going to whip through and build a small little custom project. Um, so let's just call this one Pet Rock, because we're going to build a Pet Rock. So here's my project. Uh, currently there's nothing in it except the source file. So I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to build a new Java class. And it's called this pet rock. And here it is. I'll just do a bit of cleanup on it. Um, I want to implement a constructor to set a name and have a getter method. So I'm just going to start with a field that I want. So uh, private string name. And I could write the constructors manually, or I can just type in uh, alt insert, and it'll give me the generate method uh, menu. So I'm going to say I want a constructor. And it can pick parameters. I'll take the, that parameter. And then I want a getter. So I'm going to do another one, alt insert, and give me a getter. And I've only got the one. So here I select what it is I wish to have a getter for. And there it is. So now I've got my pet rock class. What I want to do next, of course, is write some test code for that. Now, I'm going to use JUnit4. The tests are going to go inside of its own class. I could either put the tests inside the same folder, which is common on the, some projects, or I can decide to put it in my own uh, test uh, folder. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a new folder. So right click on the project, select New, Directory. I'm just going to call this Tests. And now I've got the Tests folder here. The way that I'm going to create a test uh, class in J or in uh, IntelliJ is I click on the project or the pardon me, the class that I want to have as the class under test, and I can go Alt Enter, and it brings up the menu here of things that I can do with this class. I'm going to say I want to uh, create a test, but it doesn't know yet that the tests folder is supposed to be for tests, so I don't want to do that yet unless I wanted to put the same. Uh, code inside my source folder. So what I can do is go to File, and then Project Structure, and under here, I can select, under Modules, I can tell it that this test folder is actually supposed to be for tests. So I'll mark it with the tests flag, and now it knows that this folder is special. I can hit OK, and now when I go back and hit Alt Ins or Alt Enter, pardon me, on the Pet Rock class, create a test, and now it thinks that it can put it anywhere. So I'm going to first off select the JUnit 4, and it's going to put it in the right place. Um, I can do the fix here, I might as well. It says JUnit 4 library is not found in the module. I'm going to click Fix. I can then select what it is I wish to use, so I'm going to use the IntelliJ IDE idea distribution of the uh, JUnit4, as opposed to locating my own uh, JUnit libraries. So fix that. And I'm not going to worry about any of the others. I'll go ahead and select this to give me an initial method. So here's my test code. Let me just expand the world here a little. And as of yet, it's not going to be doing much testing. Let's come up and figure out what we want to do. First, we want to build up a pet rock. So pet rock, let's call it rocky, equals a new pet rock. To my constructor, I have to give it something. Let's call it rocky. So that will allow and actually go ahead and execute my uh, uh, the constructor. Of course, I want to actually test something here. And so I'm going to also um, do a check. So I'm going to use some of the JUnit asserts. So I'm going to say assert equals, and I'm going to assert that Rocky, or I want it to be Rocky, so I put the expected first, and then the actual, so Rocky.getName. So Rocky's name, and we're basically going to check to make sure that Rocky's name actually comes back as Rocky. So to run the code, I can click into the class anywhere here, and I can say uh, run. And I can say ch -ch -ch -ch, pet rock test. That should do me. You can see in the bottom right here it's thinking a little. Let me just move that off a smidge. And now it comes back and it says that my get name test here 
passed. All tests passed. And you got a big, nice green bar that I'm looking for. So that big green bar is really the thing you're hoping for. Let's write another test. So um, one thing to do is use what's called test first development. And so I can write my own test here. I could type out all that stuff I've got up there. Or I can hit Alt Insert. And Alt Insert brings up the Generate method or menu. I want to generate a test method. And it gives me the basic one. So let's call this one, um, what do we, let's make the rock happy. So test if, test, test happy. And it looks good to start. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it that a rock starts off unhappy. So we're going to say assert, I could do assert equals and tell it false, but there happens to be an assert false. Assert false, and I'm going to check, I'm going to ask if rocky is, wait, I don't have rocky yet. So I can regenerate Rocky here. So pet rock, Rocky equals new pet rock, Rocky. Might as well stick with what works. I'm going to ask Rocky. I'm going to say Rocky is happy. So I'm going to ask Rocky if he's happy. Now, of course, I don't yet have an is happy method on Rocky. I could run my tests, but it's not even going to compile. That's a valid failure in a sort of test-driven development sense. So I can click on it. I can go Alt. Enter, and I can create one of these. So getter, uh, property, I'm going to, well, just create the method. It's the simplest way here for me. Is happy, it's going to return, well, no, just false. I'm going to say return happy. And happy is not yet created, so I'm going to create a field called happy, which is Boolean. And I'm going to set it to false just for ex making it explicit that it's going to be happy by, uh, unhappy by default. Now I can do a number of things to uh, go back to my code. I can go Control Shift T, and allow me to toggle between my test code and my my production code. So I'm going to do that and hit Enter. It takes me back here because I've got these two files open at once. I'm actually going to try and put this on the side. So I'm going to say I'm going to split vertically. So I right clicked on the tab at the top, split vertically, and now I can see both at once. I'm going to hide the panel on the left with Alt One because I don't need it. Hit that twice. And now I've got all the code here. So on the left, I don't want it twice. So on the left, I've got my production code. On my right, I've got the test code. And at the bottom is the JUnit tests that have been run. OK, so what have we got? Well, I've started to write this code here. I'm testing to make sure that it's unhappy to start. I'm going to rerun the tests that I've been running so I can do it. I'm going to go Control Shift F10 because I'm clicked into my pet rock test class. And I'm outside of a method. So then it ran all of my test methods. As a quick note, if I did the same thing, Control Shift F10, which is the run up here, so Control, I don't see it here. There. Anyway, uh, if I'm inside of a method and I go Control Shift F10, it will run only that test method. So this is nice if you're trying to work on just a specific failure. Now, wherever I am, if I wanted to rerun that same test again, I can sh hit Shift. F10 and it runs the same test. OK, so that's fine. We've got test happy is, is good to start with. This turns out not to be a very good name for me, though, because I want to make sure that we're unhappy to start. So I'm going to rename this. I'm going to Shift F6. I'm going to say test, let's call this test unhappy to start. And good enough. I'm going to create a new test. So I'm going to go Alt Insert, give me a test method. And let's go. Test uh, happy after play. Sounds good. Now, I need a rock again. Um, I could go ahead and copy that again. What I can do is I can actually just make this a static, or pardon me, just a field on my class. I'm going to get private. In my test code, my test code is going to have a private rock named Rocky, which I can set up here when it gets constructed. And then I don't need to, in every function, redefine Rocky. So this is going to make my code much simpler. Oops. So now I've got Rocky. Note the life cycle of your test, your test code is the JUnit library will, or framework, will instantiate a an instance of my pet rock test. 
It will then call the one method it's hoping to test, so for example this one here with the annotation, the test annotation, and then once that's done, it destroys the, the object, and then it goes on to the next method, this one. So then it will regenerate a new pet rock test object, and it will run this test. So each one of these tests is being executed on its own. The object is destroyed, and then a new one is created afterwards. So what I can do here is I can say, well, let's say Rocky dot, uh, let's say play with rock, maybe you create a new method here. And then I want to say assert true that Rocky dot is happy. And to make this work, of course, I have to go through here, and I'm going to alt enter it, create the method, come toss me back over to here, and when you call play with rock, I'm going to say happy equals true. So it becomes a happy rock. So I'm going to click back into my test code outside of any test function, go control shift F10 to run all of my tests. And now that they're all running, I can see that that is indeed going to work for me. Um, so what have we seen? We've seen the assert equals, which is a great way to test for any object value. It calls the dot equals on the two objects. We have assert false and assert true. We saw a brief bit of test-driven development. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show how to do things such as handling exceptions, uh, JUnit ignore, and working a bit more with fixtures. Thank you for watching.